What's up everybody? This mechanic Ron here. We're working on the 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And uh, the Jeep's been down for a while, maybe for about two months, longer than it should. And it uh, has some cracked heads, cracked and warped heads, so I had to go out and purchase some more heads. Um, got them for around 600 bucks at fullwheelparts.com. So uh, once they came in, put those on also got a new set of headers right here got those off of eBay for about 75 bucks I thought that was a good deal got that stuff put together so and I wanted to put a I purchased a 120 amp alternator from like O'Reilly Auto Parts and um, after installing that alternator uh, I went to connect my battery I connected my negative lead first and I connected the positive lead last and seems like I had some stray voltage built up somewhere or something and um, I also missed the ground when I was putting the engine back together I missed the ground that ground right there I forgot to connect that ground and also I forgot to connect my positive lead first and my negative leads last. So when I touched, before I connected this red lead to the battery, uh, I touched the post right here with the lead and it arced on me. Like some stray voltage had built up somewhere. Uh, I thought it was the alternator. So. And like an idiot, I tried it again and it popped again. So I was like, oh crap, what, I, what did I just do? So I was like, I don't know, you know, uh, I don't know. I just took the, the alternator off and just went and bought a 90 amp alternator. And then after I installed this alternator, I installed uh, my ground wire right there. block on that bracket below the bracket I installed that and uh, I went to and I, again I attached I touched the post with the positive wire and there was no arc but I should have connected the positive wire first and then finally connect the negative wires last uh, so that might have caused my problem but anyway during that arcing situation after I got everything put back together and got the battery connected I went to start the vehicle turn it over for the first time and when I went to start the vehicle and turn the key forward to the run position none of my gauges uh, and my uh, cluster illuminated so that told me crap my computer is shot and how do I know this because that's the same thing that happened uh, about 10 months ago um, the computer got fried twice and it was because of some other short somewhere else in the light switch so here I am with a brand new head in the engine brand new cylinder head all put back together ready to go and no computer so the computer's on the way um, it was still under warranty at Auto O'Reilly O'Reilly Auto Parts so uh, I'm getting that replaced under warranty and I'm hoping that I got this alternator situation worked out with the ground connection I'm hoping I got this situation worked out. And also, while I was ordering a new um, power control module, I had a battery drain, a pretty significant battery drain. And also, I had my interior lights, which stay on all the time. So I had to pull the interior light relay. Um, and that interior light relay is... Let's see if you can see in here the interior light relay 
is right here. In that location right here. Right here. So I had to pull that relay out to get my interior lights to shut off. And uh, so I thought maybe something was wrong. I don't know. I tried my best to hunt down the situ the, uh, the battery uh, draw situation, and I tried everything. I disconnected every component in the in the car, and then I came. My last thing I want to troubleshoot was this disconnect panel right here. It mounts up here like this. There you go, and it has about ten connectors on it. And um, so what I did was to find this battery draw, to find out, to try to find the source of my battery draw, I connected my multimeter here with some alligator clips on my battery and I had someone watch my voltage right here. And all I did was go in this panel on the left side, on the driver's side, I went to this panel location, this disconnect location, and I just started. I disconnected everything. I disconnected all these connectors. And then I plug them up one by one, and I had the person who was watching my multimeter, I, had, I, I told him to let me know when the battery voltage starts to drop. All right, now, uh, I waited a minute after plugging it in to see what kind of to see if my battery voltage would drop. So, first connector went in, I waited a minute, and voltage stayed the same. Second connector I plugged in, waited one minute, and the voltage stayed the same. And so on, and so on, and so on. Until I got to this very last one, this black one. And this black one is not connected to this disconnect panel. Uh, this black one is actually the connector for the BCM, body control module. When I plugged up this body control module, uh, I waited a minute and the voltage dropped uh, like, you see, my voltage was like 12.5 12 point, 12 volts DC. When I connected this black, this last connector, which goes to the BCM, um, and I waited a minute, my voltage dropped to 12.47. Um, over a minute I think 12.46 within a minute so I disconnected it after that minute and I waited two or three minutes no I think I waited five minutes and after five minutes my voltage went back up to 12.5 and then I reconnected it again to make sure that this was gonna be my problem and when I reconnected it again my battery voltage dropped again in one minute it dropped to what 12.46 volts so um to me um in my electrical experience um there's something wrong in that in that in that panel and i think that panel is responsible for the uh dome lights and such so, so I took it out and I ordered another one on eBay and uh, made sure the part number was exactly the same. And my Jeep is, uh, it has a security system. So it's very important that you order the same part. And, you know, if you decide to do this, uh, make sure the part numbers are the same, the body control module. And uh, I hope that's gonna fix the problem. Uh, if not, uh, I'll let you know in the next video. So I'm just going to show you what the body control module looks like. Um, let's see, let's go back around here. So the body control module has this one black connector on the bottom. And on the inside, it has two other connectors. I don't know if you can see those in there. Let's see. You might not be able to see these connectors. Here we go right here. All right, these are the two connectors that connect on the top side of the body control module. So these are the four mounting screws, all right? Okay. 
Once you unscrew it, un get the screws out, you take it out, you take your body control module out and move it over here and you can disconnect it right here. All right, and the way I got it out is with this panel, this disconnect panel, completely unmounted, the body control module just came out of the bottom side right here. Came out of the bottom with this out of the way. And that was it. So, like I said, uh, in the next video, um, I'll let you know whether or not this, the body control module, fixed my uh, interior light problem. But I also gotta go grab another um, interior light relay. Okay, so here's my body control module that I pulled out of my 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And it mounts on the wall like this behind the, behind that, uh, what do you call it, a knee? Um, I don't know what they call that wall. Knee panel, I think. It mounts like this. I'm sorry. It mounts like this. And that's that black connector on the bottom. And these are the other two connectors right here. Uh, now I currently have it disconnected because I wanted to inspect the circuit board for uh, signs of damage. Uh, but I looked, I think I looked pretty closely. I didn't see any obvious burn spots where I could fix, you know, uh, replace a relay, I mean, I replace a resistor, anything like that. So I couldn't visibly see anything wrong with it, but I know this is causing my, my, my battery voltage draw. So, oh, I'm sorry, my battery voltage drop. And yeah, it was a pretty significant drop in voltage. Uh, I let the truck, I let the Jeep sit for about two weeks without driving it, maybe two and a half weeks without driving it. And um, when I went to start it, it wouldn't start up. So it was killing the battery pretty significantly. Hopefully this fixed the problem and we'll let you know in the next video.